During the first few days that we were in Rocky Mountain National Park, we were stunned by the beauty around us. Our group learned firsthand how national parks preserve biodiversity so that we can enjoy it for many more years to come. Biodiversity is everything around us, all of nature, including ourselves. If we don't know what's out there, how do we even begin to conserve it? This is a big question that our group is trying to answer with our project. First, we explored how does this type of research even happen? ATBI is a long-term, continuous study that tries to catalog every single species in an area. And BioBlitz is a short-term study where you try to find as many species as you can in a short period of time. Our team is the first of hopefully many other ATBI BioBlitz SWAT teams that go to these national parks and use these methods to improve the understanding of biodiversity within them. We need to find out what organisms live in Rocky Mountain National Park and what relationships exist between them in order to better conserve them. The main goal of our field study was to find an organism that was not well researched. In order to do this, we used a database that has every species known in Rocky Mountain National Park. While looking through the database, we found there was only one spider on record in the park. And we had seen more in our cabins, so we knew there was more than one. The one spider they had on record was the black widow, the most infamous and hated spider in America. Even though we were all very scared of spiders, we decided that it was a group that was relatively straightforward to study that we could design a field study in a couple of weeks. Spiders have a lot of functions. They're a top predator in their ecosystem, so they control insect populations, including mosquitoes that we all hate so much. For our spider field survey, we were aiming to collect as many spider species as possible. So we collected the spiders both during the day and at night, as some spider species are nocturnal, which means they're active only during the night. And we also collected them in different habitats. One is an area near a river, another is an open forest near a lake. The third site was a densely packed forest higher up in the mountains. We used a canvas sweep net to collect spiders both high up in the tree and lower near the ground. We also heat the vegetation onto the beach sheet. Casual collecting method involved us looking all around. We crawled on the ground, flipped over rocks and leaves to search for ground spiders. After our spider survey, we sent our samples to Denver Museum of Nature and Science, where there's a group of volunteers to help us identify them to species. We found 51 species. So compared to the one entry in the National Park database, that's a huge improvement. We found similar numbers of spider species during day sampling and night sampling. We also found the most number of species at McGraw Range, the site near the river. At the other two sites, Lily Lake and Hidden Valley, we found fewer spider species. Our results can help the park understand and monitor spiders and do more detailed research. For example, one of our sites was a ski resort until about 20 years ago and now it's under restoration. And we didn't find as many as spiders at this site compared to the site at the river. As you can see, this forest lacks diversity and this could lead to fewer spider species. Maybe spiders can tell us about how biodiverse the ecosystems are in the park. Not only did the park benefit from our study, but we also had a very personal experience when we were there. After learning so much about spiders, now we look at them differently. Instead of just being scared of them, we are able to see them as more alive and interesting creatures that should be appreciated. We are living in such a beautiful planet with all this biodiversity around us. And how we can fully appreciate it is to have more knowledge about it. And that's why 
Biodiversity research is so important.